I found our handy dandy little uh, oil extraction kit. All right, so today now I'm down back in Lazaret again because this is how I pretty much get to everything on the boat. All right, we're starting to suck air now. So that means that uh, we are running out of oil to pull out of the engine, which is good. Yeah, I'm not really happy right now. I'm just tired and stressed out of finding stupid little things and that were taken and stolen and stuff like that, so. So we try to check before uh, we buy anything new um, just because I've done it too many times to where I bought something that I couldn't find or I thought I lost it or thought Poseidon got a tribute and uh, I'm glad I did because um, I have to change the oil in the uh, Yanmar that we have the Yanmar 3 and the child and in order to get the oil out you have to have a it's a little extractor that you use and i thought that we used to have one but i could not remember where it was and since we've been off the boat for so long and we never had to change the oil on the boat because we never hit we never hit um our mileage that are our hours that we wanted to change it at but now since it's been sitting here for eight months or whatever without the engine running we wanted to go ahead and just just go ahead and change the oil just start off fresh and we don't have to worry about it because we are going to be out for a while so i just never really had to look for it and i couldn't remember if we had it so i'm digging through everything now because we have the time to get ready to go back so luckily i did find it i found our handy dandy little uh oil extraction kit so I will be able to go ahead and get all of the oil out so we don't have to worry about it and we don't have to buy any more. So score for saving ourselves another $30, $40. So that's gonna be awesome. It's gonna save us every little every little penny helps, you know, cause it can, it can mean the matter of uh, you either run out of your budget for the day to stay somewhere um, or you have to go. And we don't like having to go. So it's nice to know that we can save that little bit of extra money and stay an extra day if we needed to. So, all right, well, let's, uh, let's get this done and knock this out. And um, we're gonna make one more last run to town, which is any, this place is, there's a Ace Hardware and a grocery store and a Burger King and a Dunkin' Donuts. And, well, there's a couple Mexican restaurants. But other than that, there's really nothing here. So if we need to go get anything, we need to go and drive like an hour or 30 minutes, an hour round trip just to pick something up. So we're gonna go and we're gonna do our last little little uh, run for anything that we may need. And then we're gonna get ready to take this baby and our son is gonna come pick it up when we go put her in the water. And then, yeah, that's it. We'll be in the water again. It's gonna feel so nice and all these other things that we don't know like i have to adjust the stuffing box i have to put up the sails you know so we're going to be at the dock for a day or two just prepping the boat and the batteries and just all that stuff so let's do this let's get it done i'm getting excited now and the boat's coming together it's clean it doesn't smell like mold anymore Whew. man what a relief all right so today now i'm down back in lazaret again because this is how I pretty much get to everything on the boat. So our diesel tank is about a quarter of a tank. Thinking back, I probably thinking back, I probably should have just um, filled it all the way up um, and put some biocide in it and just let it set. But I was counting on polishing the fuel when I got here because. We had so many problems with the uh, fuel filters having to change them. We had to change them three times since we left St. Pete by the time we got to here. So um, just very simple. What I'm going to do here is I have a priming ball, luckily. So and it goes down here. So I'm going to use my priming ball that feeds to my fuel filter. Um, I put this in a while back. The um, There was an older one here. So I just replaced it with another one, a little shutoff valve. Take the fuel line off. I'm going to uh, 
pour the fuel, dump as much of the fuel in here as I can, and then run it through a filter back into, then I'm gonna run it through a filter back into the uh, tank. So I am going to try to do as much of this as I possibly can and drain this tank as much as possible, put some biocide in it, and then so that when we're ready to fire it up, I'm gonna do it. Also, what I'm gonna double this bucket for is also I'm gonna clean this tool because it had a bunch of gunk on it and stuff. So I wanna kinda of clean it out and make sure it works so that I'll be able to change my oil today too. So, yep, that's what we're doing today. So we'll just get at it. All right, so now that I finished the uh, polishing all the fuel, emptying out all the fuel and putting the, um, running it through the filter into the jugs and then run pouring the jugs back into the tank. <laughs> We, I think I pretty much got everything out. The last thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the Raycor filter out so that we can go ahead and make sure that we have a clean filter. And that'll be the last for the fuel system and then I can go on to uh, changing the oil. So I'm gonna be crawling down here and doing this and you guys have seen me do this enough that I don't need to film this because you already know. And if you already have a boat, you already know how to do this too for the most part. If you don't, hey, let me know. I'll point you to the video, I'll send you the link to the other video that we have that where I'll go through and I show how I kind of did everything. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and knock this out so that I can change the oil and be done for the day. Hey, what are you doing? I'm just getting the kitchen ready, um, sanding all of the countertops and everything and then waxing them. Um, resealing the sink to make sure everything is sealed really good and just getting everything clean before tomorrow um, when we bring all our provisionings and relabel the, all the cans and figure out where they're gonna go and do our inventory uh, still kind of torn whether to keep I usually keep an inventory like a written down inventory and some people said that it might be better to do it electronically um, so I'm kind of torn whether to do that uh, let me know how you keep up your inventory for provisioning and stuff I'm kind of interested to see what people do uh, I think that I'm bad at keeping up with it like <laughs> I will do the inventory and I know what I have but I'm just really bad about remembering to take out that can of beans that I use or whatever it is but um, yeah getting super excited super nervous excitement on what to do we're almost there we're almost in the water and I'm ready to go so it's perfect yeah, I'm super excited to find out once I got in and I'm cleaning everything out. One of the things when our boat got broken into, one of the things that I left in the boat that I was really hoping it was still here was my super duper shot glasses that our friends Buzz and Karen got us and they left them ooh, ooh, so we can still do our homage to the gods and leave every time we go <laughs> and it's absolutely necessary for them to happen in these shot glasses because if not it's good luck it, it is it's good luck it worked for us every time so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm super glad that, that my shot glasses are still here and stuff so yeah and my stormtroopers, Yeti. And your stormtroopers, you're starting to peel. It's all right, it's worth it. Make sure that as we continue on, that you keep liking our videos. If you have not done so already, make sure you subscribe and even press the little alarm. It will let you know when we put a new video out and that's it. If you want to contribute, you are welcome to go on Patreon. Um, if not, and you prefer not to go through Patreon, but still want to find some ideas on how to support us, we do have an Amazon wish list and goals wish that we're working on. And I try to post that on Facebook too. Um, so just shoot me a message if you want our private email and 
if you want to support that way, that's perfectly fine. We are trying again this year to combine efforts in the islands. Uh, the Bahamas still has a lot of efforts going on after Hurricane Dorian. And we have a couple nonprofit organizations that we're trying to get some details. So as we visit the islands, we get to partner with them and help out and keep the good love and positive energy going because we need that in the world especially right now so very safely we're gonna heal the world <laughs> so we are going to change our oil it is kind of dirty so we're going to be um doing this so we have this little tube here this little setup that i showed earlier so and we have our bucket here that we're going to put our oil in so that i can dispose of it properly afterwards and then, uh, so this part of this little tube is actually going to be going into the dipstick hole, which is right there. Put the tube down in the hole, pump out the oil, and then uh, when it's all, all drained out, we're going to go ahead and fill it back up, check our oil levels, fill it, top it off. We'll get it back in the water this afternoon. Thank God. We're going to... Uh, then start up the engine, let it run for a little bit, warm up, do his thing, and then we're gonna shut it down, check the fluids again, and then we should be good to go. I have to do a lot of cleanup here on the motor. We have some build up from we have some build up from just setting here. So this engine will clean up, but I just got a lot of scrubbing to do and stuff like that. It's just dirty. All right, let's get down to pumping this oil out and getting this stuff done. All right, we're starting to suck air now. So that means that uh, we are running out of oil to pull out of the engine. The manual says it holds right at about uh, four quarts and four quarts is a gallon. So how much I've pumped out is uh, right here at this little gallon mark line. So we should uh, we should be pretty good to go. So yeah. That part's done. Now I just gotta take off the oil filter. Hopefully not make any mortal mess doing that. And it'll come off pretty easy. And swap that part out. Put the dipstick back in. And then start putting oil back in. And then we'll be done. So, yeah. So another little quick tip. When um, I don't have an oil filter wrench. It was in one of my bins that got stolen. So, uh, sometimes these things can be a little bit of a snafu to get off. So what you do is, you can do a couple different things here. One is the old redneck trick that I've done before, is uh, you just take a screwdriver and you hammer it right through the oil filter. It'll give you some leverage, you can do it, but I don't like doing that if I don't have to because it does make a huge mess and I'm trying to keep this clean. But what you can do is you can take a strap and you just basically wrap it on backwards than what it would be to, uh, that it's threaded so that then you can take your screwdriver or take a screwdriver put it in here and then use the strap as a uh to get leverage on it and that's another way to do it you can use a belt you can use all different kinds of things so let's see how this works There you go. And that was it. I just take the strap off now. And then I want to get me a rag so I can catch any oil that drips out from off this thing. And as just like with a car, you want to make sure that when you put the new one on, obviously you take the plastic off, duh. Uh, but you want to put some a little thin coat of oil around your uh, ring. Also, one thing you want to make sure you do that sometimes you miss is you want to make sure that when you take the other filter off that the actual other O-ring comes off with it. Because if, if it doesn't come off and you put the other one on, you're actually going to have just a little bit of a gap. And then you'll start dripping oil. And you won't be able to figure out where it's coming from. So... Unless you can have an engine like ours where you can just see it right here. The uh, drip might be uh, really small, but over time, the more you use it, you'll run out of oil. So that's a bad thing. 
So always make sure you get the other O-ring off before you put the new filter on. And then, yeah, let's just crank this out. And as you see, we have our handy dandy little uh, oil catching rag here that we use down in the bilge and all kinds of stuff like that. And then, yeah, you just take it off quickly and efficiently and you're good to go. So I'm just gonna double check this, make sure that it's all clean. Make sure the O-ring came off, clean up the surface here. And then, um, yeah, wipe off all this oil and put the new one on, we'll be good to go. Make sure my threads are nice and good. Clean up any excess oil. All right, and as you can see here, as you can see right here, just on this part alone, our engine is dirty, but it's just that. It's just dirty. So once I get, um, this is my favorite thing to say, crap, I made a clean spot, now I have to clean the rest of the engine. I also have another little quick tip, save you a lot of time, a lot of headache. We actually, um, when we did this, I just went to the store and bought the oil filter and because I got so much and too many other things going on, I forgot to do a really important part, which caused me a second trip to the store because I got the wrong oil filter. On all of your oil filters, it will have a part number. So these part numbers will tell you when you go to the store or if you're going to order it online or anything like that to make sure that you have the actual right oil filter. So you just want to make sure that um, before you start changing your oil, look at all your parts lists. And that way when you go to go get your new part or order your part, you know you're actually getting the one that will actually fit. So I'm going to pour our oil in, check our oil fuel fluid level, and um, yeah, take it from there. We'll go ahead and start her up once we get back in the water. So just another bummer, a little upset about some stuff. It's, uh, we're getting ready to launch tomorrow and we're just kind of going over our last list of stupid little stuff that we uh, think we uh, may need and stuff like that. Just trying to walk through here in the work yard. And um, yeah, so kind of find out that uh, Madeline was sitting there going through our list of stuff and one of the things we were looking at was um, one of the things we were looking at was oh hey I don't remember seeing the PFDs you know our really good Mustangs that we had and I thought we'd put them in the wet locker or wherever because it is what it is but we don't remember where everything is on the boat obviously we already talked about that so I was like, you know, let me go over here and check the boat and see if they're in there just somewhere where we can't find them or something like that. And yeah, they're gone. So they were one of the other things that also got stolen. So yeah, not really happy right now. I'm just tired and stressed out of finding stupid little things and that were taken and stolen and stuff like that. So I mean, it's. Uh, I'm just glad that we took all of our electronics and all that stuff out of the boat that we knew we were gonna, you know, were valuable, our batteries and all that good stuff. So it's just the stupid little things like that that just really piss you off. So we do still have our old school PFDs, so we'll still be in Coast Guard regulation for when we leave, but we're not gonna have our really good Mustangs and we'll just have to wait and save up or look for a really good deal and hope we can find some, you know, so, and that'll be how that works. So, yeah, that's how today ended.